Thank you very much. Chair, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for coming to uh, address our select committee on behalf of Grenfell United under uh, what I uh, can well appreciate are very difficult personal circumstances. And let me also reassure you that many of us have been highlighting on the floor of the House of Commons, uh, you know, whether it's the horrors of the tragedy, whether it's uh, the unacceptable delays um, you know, in rehousing survivors and the uh, families of the victims and what needs to change going forward. But in terms of today's questionings, uh, what I would like to uh, concentrate on is the government's response mm. uh, and its action on cladding. Uh, so, Mr. Define, if I can start with yourself, uh, you know, what is your assessment of the government's efforts thus far to remove cladding from residential buildings? I'm going to hand this over to Adele with your permission. Yeah, okay. I, I can answer the same thing is that, you know, my understanding is the primary job of government is to keep the people safe, and I believe that our government are failing to do that. Okay, okay so to, to be brutally blunt, two years after the worst fire uh, since the Blitz, uh, the government's inability and reluctance to recognise the scale of the problem means it's still playing with fire. Uh, you'll pardon the pun, um, it, no, there's nothing fire, funny about that at all, uh, but continuously placing people's lives at risk by not dealing with the scale of the issue is horrifying. Okay. Would you like to add anything else, Mr. Aguilini? Uh, well, I mean, the, the, we, we could talk about, um, you know, they, they've got plans on, on what to do, uh, but are they adequate? So, for instance, they, they've had the Hackett report, which had some, you know, some really good findings, uh, really good recommendations, but the, the way it's being implemented seems to be, you know, cherry picking and damage, lim damage limitation. Um, it's, um, you know, if, if we talk about cladding, for example, ACM, you know, we're focusing on ACM only because that's going to resolve all of our problems and suddenly we're not going to have uh, flammable buildings because we've dealt with ACM. But we know that they've had a report since October 2018 talking about the dangers of other forms of cladding and they still haven't dealt with them. They, they, again, the importance they place on everything seems to be about the process of, of, of testing, etc. They, they have these reports from, from, from establishments like BRE that tell them this stuff is dangerous. Okay, I fully take on board what you just said about um, dangers outside of ACM cladding, but let's concentrate on ACM cladding. In, uh, you know, the government would say that in the social sector that they've announced a £400 million fund uh, to replace ACM cladding, and they did, and they did that in May 2018. Mm. And in terms of the, uh, the, the the private sector, I think it was a, a, a 200 million pound fund uh, to you know for, for the removal of ACM cladding. Now, from what you've seen thus far, and I've read uh, you know some of your comments uh, in terms of the evidence, uh, Mr. Defont, you know, from what you've seen, do you think that that's uh, that there is an adequate plan in place uh, to ensure that cladding is removed quickly? So, so hold on, so one second. So that social housing plan was only put in place almost 12 months after the fire. I mean, you all saw it in television, some of us are there live. And is that acceptable? Can we say that 11 months after such a devastating fire, knowing what caused it, that it's acceptable that we wait 11 months before we do something about it in, in, in social housing, and then we wait a further 12 months before we do anything about it in, 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 in private housing. So, it, again, people tell us that uh, you know, government takes time, but w w you know, this is too big. This is too big to just ignore and shuffle under the carpet and hope to limit the, dam the, the damage caused by you know, a legacy of, of dangerous building, allowing dangerous building practices. You know, we should have been doing something about this in the months immediately after Grenfell, not waiting up to 24 months. And then, even then, so we've got this wonderful fund of 400,000, we've got this wonderful fund of 200,000, when's this stuff going to be removed? We still don't have a date for when people are going to be safe in their homes, let alone when we're going to deal with high pressure laminate and all the other, well, which actually high pressure laminate supposedly is even more dangerous than ACM, even more flammable than ACM. So when are we going to deal with that? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think what's important to appreciate from well, what we want to actually put across to you lot is you need to understand why this is so important to us. 
I think a lot of people are putting their faith into the public inquiry, into the criminal investigation, but also this is a form of justice for a lot of the previous survivors, and that is to have fundamental change. And 25 months on, there's some things, and I know you mentioned the 400 million, it came too late. And we had to campaign for that, we had to petition, we had to fight for that literally meeting after meeting, hour after hour. We come from different professional backgrounds. We're not experts in cleaning, we're not experts in social housing, we're not, but some things are just so obvious that we struggle to understand why they weren't done immediately. And us still talking about these issues 25 months in is unacceptable. There's so many other issues that are wrong in systems and, in, and, 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 and local authorities, house association, government. We haven't even come to that. Because I know there's a word is make people feel safe in their homes. No, 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 it's actually make people safe in their homes. Yeah. It's not about feeling safe, it's actually people are not safe in their homes. Yeah. And that is, that is what we struggle with, yeah. that is what we struggle with. What do you think of the government's plans? Well, I, I think bearing in mind that, you know, we're aware that, I don't know whether it was your committee or whether it was Kevin Hollenreich himself, in July 2018 was writing to the government, to the Treasury, asking for money for the removal of cladding from private buildings. So we go to July through to May without any action and uh, it just feels like a complete abdication of responsibility by the government that it would take that long to action a plan that, 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 I mean, the idea for any of us that you could go to bed and sleep in a building with that cladding on that did that to us at Grenfell is absolutely horrific. So, you know, the honest answer is, is it's like it falls well below the necessary standard of response. If we were looking two months after Grenfell, then you know maybe you could say there was a the, the, you know that things needed time to sort out two years plus after Grenfell, and you know I mean I, I, one of your letters uh, uh, or reports about the testing mechanism they, the rig that they tested the cladding on was broken so nothing was getting tested I mean mm -hmm. there's a casualness there's a lack of focus mm -hmm. and you know every single night they are playing Russian roulette. Because while this cladding is still on buildings, Grenfell 2 is in the post. And we said that last time we were here. It is only luck that has prevented another Grenfell happening. It is only luck. Yeah. There is a 100% chance that fires will occur inside properties. All that needs to happen is for that fire to get outside the building and into the cladding, mm. and you will have Grenfell 2. Yeah. And, you know, the government are not going to recover from that. You're, you, know, you, you, you know, the government basically just about recovered from Grenfell, but they won't recover from Grenfell too. People will not put up with that. Two years plus of inaction is uh, it's mind boggling. Uh, uh, I, I appreciate what you've just said. And in terms of, you know, there are many councils, uh, uh, you know, uh, for example, within my own Slough constituency mm -hmm. where um, councils are asking for funding in terms of the remedial works that they've uh, undertaken or they would like to uh, undertake uh, in terms of cladding. Um, and I know uh, obviously what you've said previously in terms of your written submissions as well about Grenfell 2 very much being in the post unless action, swift action is taken. Now you know, uh, you've partly answered the question but just for the record do you feel the government is receptive to the concerns that Grenfell United continues to raise about the use uh, of cladding on residential buildings? In a word, no. No, uh, we don't. I mean, acro across more than just clad, you know, the, the issue of cladding itself. So, for example, um, we, 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 you know, we've, we feel the one-size-fit-all rules that they're trying to implement in, in this new um, regime that they're proposing just, just won't always work. And that uh, we, we need to look again at how, how, what sort of types of buildings. So, for, for instance, 18 metres. Um, so, uh, this may, you know, the 18 metres, uh, you know, that, that's where we'll define you can put combustible fueling on your on your house, and if it's above uh, below eighteen meters, uh, above eighteen meters, then it's fine. Um, it made no difference to Barking. It made no difference to to uh, St Albans two days earlier. You know that that was an ACM fire, I believe. Um, you know we're still enabling uh, regulators to construct our homes, our schools, and our hospitals with fuel material. There's, it makes no sense, and and um, you know. We need, we need the government to recognise that this is, the scandal has gone further than, than just these nice-to-have rule sets and that they need to actually 
make a real difference and real change to people's lives and keep them safe. Okay, thank you very much for your frank response.